Hi everybody, welcome to Dixie's Storytime World. The Stone Cutter's Tale. The sun rose over Prettyville. Martin, the best stone cutter in the land, was already at work. He was making a sculpture of his friend Jan. He took his smallest chisel and chipped lightly at the stone. Chip, 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 chip. Suddenly, the birds went quiet. There was the sound of marching footsteps and clanking weapons. Two soldiers stopped in front of Martin's house. One of them shouted, Hey, stone cutter, come with us. We have orders to take you to our lord, Archibald Gold. At the castle, Lord Gold told Martin, I want you to build the tallest and most beautiful tower ever seen. A tower that will tower over the land and touch the clouds. Martin said, a tower, but I, I don't have enough good stones. Lord Gold gave a wicked smile. I will get you all the stones you need, he said, but you must never ask where they came from, and you must not leave the castle until the work is finished. Accept now or get out of my sight forever. Martin could not believe his ears, but this was a chance to show what he could do. He was, after all, the best stone cut in the land. I accept said Martin. He went to fetch his tools and to tell Jan the news. She asked him in a shaky voice, Will you be gone long? As long as it takes to build the biggest tower ever seen, said Martin excitedly. Jan looked away and said nothing. Martin added, I don't want to leave you, Jan, but this tower will be my masterpiece. When I've finished, I'll come back to the village and everything will be as it was before. You'll see. But Jan ran away in tears. Martin spent months at Lord Gold's castle. He slept in a little tent on the building site. Every morning, the soldiers brought more cartloads of lovely smooth stones. Martin wondered where the stones came from, but he had promised never to ask. As he worked, he thought about Jan. He knew she was sad, but he said to himself, She will forgive me when she sees my work. She will be proud of me. Slowly, the tower rose up into the sky. A year later, Martin's tower was finished. He looked out across the land and said, I should be able to see Prettyville from up here. He stood on tiptoe and searched, but couldn't see anything. Prettyville had disappeared. Suddenly, Martin understood. The stones brought by the soldiers had come from his village. How horrible! Just then, Lord Gold appeared. He said, Well done, Martin. This is the most beautiful town in the land. Martin's mouth was dry. But, but you stole the stones from the houses in my village. Lord Gold laughed. It's your fault. You wanted good stones, Martin, and I got them for you. My soldiers had to chase the people out of your village so they could pull down their houses. Now the villagers all live in the forest. Martin ran away from the castle feeling terrible. He ran and ran until it got dark. The stone cutter collapsed by a big rock to catch his breath. I'm a monster, he thought. My village was destroyed so that I could have good stones. I betrayed my friends. Without thinking, Martin picked up a sharp pebble and began hitting the rock as hard as he could. Stone chips flew all around him. Martin was in a rage and he wasn't thinking properly. All night, the sound of the stone hitting the rock rang out through the forest. At dawn, Martin stopped. His hands were cut and bruised. In front of him, where the rock had been, was a huge stone knight on horseback. Boom, 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 boom. The dull, thudding noise came from the stone knight, like a heart beating. Boom, 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 boom. A deep voice came from the knight's grey lips. Greetings, little stone cutter. I've been waiting for years in my dark prison. You freed me. Order, and I will obey. Martin was exhausted, but in a small voice, he told the knight his story. The knight helped Martin to climb up behind him, and together they galloped towards the castle. The horse's hooves made a terrible rumbling, and the ground trembled. Lord Gold's castle rose up in front of them. The tall tower shone in the morning sun. Martin could see Lord Gold waving his arms around and shouting orders at his soldiers. That tower brought misery to the people in my village, said Martin. It must be destroyed. 
the stone knight destroyed the walls with his sword he took no notice of the arrows raining down on him martin sheltered under his friend's shield in a few minutes the highest and most beautiful tower in the land crumbled in a cloud of dust lord gold ran away and didn't look back his soldiers threw down their bows and surrendered martin said stone knight we have one more thing to do Martin and the Stone Knight went into the forest to find the people of Prettyville. Lord Gold's soldiers rebuilt the village houses with stones from the tower. Life returned to normal in the village. Martin and Jan were friends again. Martin put his arm around Jan. Forgive me, I didn't think it through. I just wanted to build something beautiful. Jan smiled. It's true, you weren't thinking, and I was angry with you, but you came back. I always knew you were the best stone cutter in the land anyway. The end. I hope to enjoy this story, my lovely listeners. I'll see you soon in another adventure. Always remember to be good, polite, and kind. Thanks for watching and listening. Enjoy more stories at Dixie Storytime World on YouTube. We're also available on the Kids YouTube app.